What's the story, Mother? <laughs> Hadley's Hope, jointly funded by Wayland Utani and the United Americas, has a them and us feel to it. With any visiting corporate folk looking down their noses at the colony's laborers. Despite this, the colony has been developing well. There's opportunity aplenty, and risk aplenty, too. Four days ago, a wildcatter named Russ Jordan was brought back infected with something. He died, and some snake-like parasite disappeared into the guts of the base. Security has had no luck catching the thing, and somehow more people were infected. Rumor has it that some of them have died, and that there are, are more of these snake things than Supervisor Simpson is admitting to. Simpson spoke over the intercoms, calling for calm. Crisis or not, you have a job to do. 24 hours ago, you headed out on a maintenance run to Processor 9. Happy to leave base until the crisis blows over. 10 kilometers out, Singleton's tracker gave up the ghost. A nasty mechanical crunch told you it wasn't going any farther. Calls back to Hadley's Hope got a cursory response. You were told to wait, and they'd get to your little problem when they had the time. While you waited, you got to talking about the crisis in the Wayland yutani corporate shuttle that arrived right before you left. The shuttle carried an inspection team led by company agent Miranda Reynolds and her chief scientist, Theodora Kamiski. Sig relayed something he had overheard, a hushed conversation about the shuttle being quickly and quietly readied for departure. Reynolds and Kaminsky are likely the only two who can authorize its use, and the only two with the access keycards needed to use it. For all you know, it was Reynolds who ordered Jordan out there in the first place. It's not right for Wayland yutani reps to just skip out and leave you, the workers, to clean up this bloody mess. If things go bad, why shouldn't you get those key cards and get away instead? A day has passed, and you've still heard nothing. All further attempts to contact Hadley's Hope have been fruitless. No one is coming to help. The only communications you pick up on are garbled, panicked even. There's no option but to walk back and see what the hell is going on. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show this to all of you so you guys have that. And it should remain in your journals. So if you ever want to revisit this intro text, it will be there for you. Okay. It'll probably show up near the bottom, uh, above maybe above your character sheets. Just says It should say, what's the story, mother? for its title. Yeah, we got oh, it. All right, perfect. So, we pick up the scenario and I'm going to move you guys to a different map and roll 20. After the long walk back to Hadley's Hope, and I'm going to shift ping you guys to your current location in the map so you guys can see where you're at. Were you guys able to pick up on that ping? Mm-hmm. Okay, I've got all your tokens out there. You guys have just entered and closed the west area lock. And as Singleton is the last one in and seals the doors, you guys notice that over the PA system, there is a repeating message that keeps on going on over and over. A female sonic kind of robotic voice that keeps on saying, This is an emergency message. All colonists must immediately assemble at the main storeroom of the sub-level for safety. This is an emergency message. All colonists must immediately assemble at the main storeroom on the sub-level for safety. This is an emergency message. And it just keeps repeating over and over and over again. Hey, um, let's... I said good the more. No, uh, <laughs> where is the sublevel? Um, you guys, I put, I left the map like visible because you guys have been here for quite some time, so you guys okay. know where everything is. Uh, you guys would know that you can 
use, there is a ladder access within the west lock that does lead down to the sub level. Hmm. Oh, um, okay, so we can just. And everybody, and as we kind of zoom in uh, on the group of, of the party, let's start with uh, with our Janice and McWhir. What, uh, what what do the what does the what does everybody see uh, when we focus in on our officer? Uh, Janice is forty two year old, uh, very sort of short. Uh, Short, sort of part, almost like almost curly hair, very sort of stern look to her face. Um, most of the most of the workers, uh, nor as she is the primary uh, union officer of this mm. location. Mm -hmm. um, right now, looking to is as we're walking in, and the noise is just sort of walking in, just rubbing her temples. <laughs> okay, and just and. Just sort of again looks over towards the ladder leading down, and sort of casts a half a half a glance back at Singleton, and it just looks over, just rolls her eyes a little bit, and then goes back to start looking to see what the others are doing as we're sort of figuring out the situation we just walked into. Okay, the the camera pans from your look to Singleton. So Hannah Singleton, what does the uh... What does everybody see? I'm a 32-year-old, uh, you know, no-nonsense female. Um, I like to get stuff done really efficiently, and, you know, this is just one headache for me, too. You know, I cast a glance back at McQuirr, and I, I kind of shrug in resignation and say we should probably check out that bunker thing. I should probably have a term for it, because I'm the pilot. I should know the ship better. And Jason. But, yeah, we should totally check that out. Okay. At that point, the camera pans over to an individual wearing a lab coat. Uh, as we <laughs> as we focus in on uh, Sunny Sig, uh, what do they see when they, they look at, at Sig? Uh, I am a 29-year-old uh, man with messy hair uh, pretty uh, average looking individual <laughs> always wearing a lab coat um, very curious but in this moment um, beads of sweat dripping down my face I'm pretty nervous in this situation uh, I don't think we hear the emergency broadcast very often <laughs> so I don't know what is going on but I'm, I'm worried but after that, uh, we pan over to uh, Morgan Hirsch. Uh, Morgan, what does the camera see whenever they pan over to you? Yeah, hello. So I'm Morgan. I'm 39 years old. And I am the janitor here. I've been here since day one. So this really, this hasn't really affected me at all. <laughs> and I look over to Sigs and just do a small little smile. Thinking, oh, he doesn't even know the half of it. <laughs> excellent and we also uh, zoom across the room to Holroyd uh, Jason you want to go ahead and explain Holroyd for us sure yeah Holroyd is uh, looks pretty placid not really plussed at the moment um, you know just making sure he knows like double checking where the uh, on the map where the way down to the bunker is no, it's not the word we're supposed to use, but I can't remember what it is. So, um, but uh, yeah, he's. Uh, I guess yeah, you guys would know he's an android at this point. So, he's. Uh, he just looks like he's mid thirties male, just standard standard fodder. Doesn't really stick out too much, but okay, just uh, ready to go, ready to get working. Excellent. So, uh, Singleton uh, looks as if she is appearing to go for uh, the the ladder is protected. It does have airlocks on it you guys would know that you guys have been terraforming this planet that you've been on for quite some time and the atmosphere outside is breathable but not not 100 percent safe uh, there's a lot of electromagnetic storms that occur rather uh, regularly it's always cloudy uh, it's never it's 
high winds all the time. But you can go outside without a helmet or mask on and still be able to breathe the air. Uh, and for those of you who have ever seen the movie, the original Alien movie from 1979, you guys are actually on LV-426, which is the original uh, place uh, that happened and occurred in the movie. So if you'd like to go watch the movie after this, oh, no. you'll get to see. <laughs> um <clears throat> So you uh, you're going for this. Ooh, that's quarter I died <laughs> <laughs> uh, Singleton is going for the air air latch, and as you're doing that, Singleton, all of a sudden over the PA system, you guys hear a terrible electronic screech over the PA, and the alarm system stops repeating. Uh, Holroy will uh, look up at the, the the PA system, and then um, they just like look look back and see what everybody else is trying to do. Would I know but, where the is the security office on this level? Security office. Let's see. I think. I know there's a bunch of spots that specify that there are offices, but... Yeah. There is a chief... Let me double-check something really fast. I think it might be on the second level. Okay. Um, there is a command center on the second level. Which, okay, so could, which would probably, probably which would probably be, be your best bet. It's on block. It would be, it's an E block on the second floor. Okay. So E block is on the south side of the of the colony. And and the second floor that would be the, that would be going down one floor basically. Second floor would be going up one. Oh, you, oh. you guys are basically on the ground the floor. Going? That ladder only goes down. Okay. Let's split the party. <laughs> um, where's the, where's the closest ladder that goes up to us? Um, the closest ladder that goes up. Let me double check. That's the only thing I don't like about the split maps. Is oh, here we go. Bum, bum. There are two ladders. In C, uh, both uh, both those ladders in C block one go up. Hi. Okay. Mm. Well, should we Kendis, check the? Kendis is going to turn back to the group and just be like, yeah. "Oh, the alarm's gone off. Perhaps we should start upstairs." Should we check on the people though? If we go to the command center, we should be able to see what's going on. We should be able to check from them remotely and be able to check on both at once. I don't know if that'll help them feel safe, but sure. Whatever. Let's do it. Yes, I agree with Singleton. Well, follow me then. <laughs> and I'll, I'll take point and lead the way towards uh, C block ladder. Okay. So you guys going to start making... Something your... I should have mentioned that everyone would have noticed on McWhir is she also has a bolt gun strapped to one hip, and on the other hip she's got a knife. Mm -hmm. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and she's <laughs> right after Hallroyd, like... <laughs> six inches behind him just basically and you guys would know like you guys have to do lots of repairs on things bolt guns or imagine like a nail gun that people put like yeah. for construction but much bigger and has much bigger nails Ooh. and bolts in it <laughs> to use the nail like steel sheets to steel girders. yeah exactly yeah. like if for space you need bigger tools <laughs> that's what these are okay So you guys are gonna go and start uh, start down this hall. Is that where? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I'll I'll drag my feet behind them. Uh, <laughs> okay. Nervously. Hesitantly curious. Yeah, and you can see this hall is pretty well lit by fluorescent lights that seem there seems to be a couple that kind of flicker uh, down in the, the distance there. And uh, Hallroyd, you're leading the way, and you you almost approach that that ladder access there to go up to uh, the second floor of C block. When you guys, um, 
in the deadened silence of this place without the alarm going on, you guys hear a gunshot and a lonesome scream that echoes through the ventilation ducts. It could have come from anywhere at all as it echoes through. I want everyone to take a point of stress. Except for Holroyd, because you don't stress. <laughs> oh, that's not encouraging sounds. Okay. <laughs> I never heard that before. A gunshot? A scream? Be more specific. Singleton, give him a break. He's not. Listen. Hey. We're here to do a job. <laughs> Gotta get it done. This is just nonsense on the side. I could not agree with you more, but you are speaking to. The cleaning crew. Well, hold on a second, but what if somebody's injured or something? We might need to go help them. You know, they might they might need help. They might be dead already. I, I would hope not. Do you have medical supplies on you? I do. I have a med kit on my hip. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> well, we can't know where that came from, so wandering around when... We don't know what's going on is imprudent at best. True, we should look at the camp. Okay. The cameras. Yeah. So I, like, <laughs> just, just kind of like ignore ignore Sig a little bit and just like go to reach up for the for the 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 way up. Okay, sure. Yeah, easily you open the, the, the locked latch of this doorway and it opens up into a ladder that leads up to the second floor. Okay. I'll take a peek around, see uh, see if there's anything up there that's like possibly a threat to uh, everybody else's uh, safety. As McWhir goes to start following, like do that halfway up the ladder is how it's going up. Is Sig following right behind us, or is Sig still sort of like trying to stick back and look like they're dragging their feet? Uh, well, I wanted to ask: Is this like a little computer terminal here uh, that's beside us? Yeah, it's an access computer terminal. Yeah. What kind of stuff can we do on the computer terminals? Um, I mean, it's up to your imagination. Role we'll play it out. Like, what, 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 what would you like? I, I just kind of like stop the computer terminal real quick. I'm gonna try, try to see if I can just like, even if it's just one or two cameras, try to get to the camera system from here instead of having to go all the way up the ladder, maybe. You, your, a... your character would know that you probably don't have the access codes to do okay. that. Yeah. Um, unless you worked within the security like section, you probably wouldn't have the codes to get into that. Now you could, you could try to guess, but it's going to be extremely difficult. It's it's kind of like it's kind of like me like grabbing somebody's iPhone and trying to unlock their you know without knowing what their password is. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll uh, I'll fiddle with it for a second, probably not get anywhere, and then just like pick up the pace to catch up to everybody. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. Uh, so Hollerwood, you said you were getting to the top and taking a look around to see if there was any threat uh, to your safety. Yeah. Yeah. Be before before I like let everybody else up I'm kind of like blocking the way up uh, okay on purpose yeah uh, basically it comes out and into a hallway uh, that leads to the east and really you don't notice anything as you hop up there I'll, I'll just call back and say it's it's clear, and I'll just continue up. Okay. I'll uh, grab your tokens and I'll move them to the next floor. And, and then I'll uh, follow one right behind. Okay, I'm going to paste you guys here and show you where you guys come up. So I'm going to shift ping you guys. This is where the ladders, the ladder led you to. Uh, if you can see this correctly, see the light green uh, to the left? That was... I, we're still on floor one. Oh, yeah. I apologize. I apologize, guys. I forgot to move the player flag. There you go. 
I'll shift pingy again. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Okay. Yes. So if you guys get an idea of the map, the like the darker parts of the map are the floor that you're on, and the like really light green is the previous floor below. So you see this big hallway. Oh, okay. So you guys were in. So this ping right here, this is where you entered downstairs, and you went down this hall and then up. Okay. Okay. So now you're in basically C2 would be like the corporate office uh, block is where you currently are. So the, okay, so, you, so these are corporate okay. offices? <clears throat> these are corporate offices, yes. Uh, but you would know that E uh, the command center is located down here, E2. E2. Yeah. That's, uh, Mc, McWhorter is going to uh, take a stop though and just sort of going to try to open the first door, uh, check each of the offices as there as she's going through just you know, try the handle see if she can get into okay into any of the offices so McWhorter is going to check any of the offices doors actually McWhorter the first office that you see uh, is actually the, the one there on the top right hand side which is the administrator's office Okay. Um, and when you get there, you do notice that the door, uh, the door is open. It's kind of like a metal mechanical slide door, and the door is open. Um, you can see inside, and it looks to be as if there is, on the far side of the room, there looks like there is someone sitting in a chair facing away from you. But it almost seems as if they're like, all you can see is like the back of their head and then the rest is just, just chair. So you can see like the back of their head and this comfortable chair. I'm gonna sort of take a couple of steps and knock on the door frame, you know, give the, hello, is just taking a break in your office. You get no answer. Hirsch, poke him with the mop. Um, I feel McGuire should just go and touch him. I don't have a mop on. <laughs> what would he do? <laughs> uh, I clean, but as you can see, this clearly isn't a situation for me to start cleaning. I mean, no, like... poke the chair with the mop. It's it's like it's like saying that <laughs> because you're the pilot, you should just have a plane on hand or something. <laughs> you know, I'm just confused about what his job is. Then I guess I'm a janitor. It doesn't, it doesn't mean I carry a mop around. Have you got the keys to to the cockpit here? Uh, Why did you say that you'd keys to everywhere then? Horrid's gonna like kind of put himself between the two and just kind of like like just a shoulder each. Like I'll. I'll go deal with it, and then he'll just kind of like walk in, <laughs> okay. and then just just That's like, like spin, just just spin the chair. Okay. Uh, before you guys get yeah. there, what I'd like you guys to do, uh, those of you that are entering the room and getting closer, I'd like you to make observation rolls for me, please. Okay. Okay. I'm looking from the hallway. I'm not going into the room. Uh, not going into the room. Okay. Okay. <laughs> only only people who enter the room can yeah. make can make yeah. the observation roll. Okay, and all you got to do oh, is on your I'm character sheet, all, all you have to do to make rolls in this game is click on the skill observation, and it'll automatically roll it for you. I don't know what any of these oh, dice okay. Oh, this is Andy, great. You're, going into, you're, coming into the, you're coming into the room too? Me? I was yeah. kind of in the like, center. So. Okay, you got it. So it's everybody but Sig is going into the room. <laughs> I, everybody but Sig. I'm not touching that room. <laughs> this is sketchy, dude. <laughs> Okay, so Holroyd, uh, unfortunately, is just too focused on what he's doing and heading towards the chair to spin the chair around. Uh, Hannah, this is this is freaking you out a bit. You rolled a natural one on your panic die, which is that face hugger symbol. That means that you get to make a panic roll for us. The first panic roll of the game. Do you see where it says panic roll on your character sheet? Not oh yeah, panic. Yes. Roll roll that for me. Go ahead and roll that. A five. So so basically, what that means is you hold it together. You're getting a little nervous. 
Uh, you guys see uh, she's walking in the room. She's a little bit uneasy about the situation. This person didn't respond back. And uh, how, how, why wouldn't a janitor have a mop? Come on, seriously. I'm just, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> so she's, she's starting to panic a little bit. Um, McWhir and Hirsch, you guys mm. notice above the, the person sitting in the chair, there is a duct and where there used to be what would be a metal grating on the duct is no longer there and is a rag ragged hole in the duct work where that metal used to be. Okay. Um, Pulling out the gun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to say that. Okay, guys. I've cleaned all this areas plenty of times and that hole was never there. Uh, as I'm turning the as I'm turning the chair around, I'm gonna say what hole? <laughs> <laughs> the and hole um where the ML grate is just above you. And as the chair spins around, you can see that this is not this is a mutilated body sitting in this chair. Uh face clearly almost cleanly ripped off throat kind of gouged out and the front clothing of this individual is just soaked in blood um there is a lanyard hanging around the body's neck i'm gonna pull that off and then turn the chair back around okay all of you in the room excluding sig because he's out of the room uh, when you see this bloody mess in the chair, you gain a point of stress. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, said there's a, you said there's a lanyard on it. Does the lanyard have a name on it? Is it's kind of it's kind of as if it's kind of as if the lanyard is hooked around the neck and then it tucks into like the clothing. So you'd have to pull it off. But it looks like Holroyd is doing that already. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it yeah. off and say, uh, uh, what? Sorry, McFair is it, McFair is the officer. Or the captain? Yeah. McWhir's the union officer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to pull it off and say, uh, Officer McBear, uh, here's here's this. It is dripping. Oh, it's dripping with blood and gore. I'm sort of going to hang it, shake it onto the floor a little bit. Okay. <laughs> uh, forgive me. I, uh... I just came this place. <laughs> <laughs> Look, <laughs> 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 yeah, Khan say, "Look, now you get to clean that up." Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> <You're welcome>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, McWhir, uh, you can see that this is in fact a key card that clearly uh, has the name of uh, Agent uh, Reynolds on it. So you presume that this person who was killed was Agent Reynolds. Now, looking closer at the key card as you look at it, you can tell it's been damaged. I think it might be possible to repair it? <sighs> Unfortunately, it doesn't appear like you would have the tools or the materials to be able to repair this card. But do I think they exist within our location? Like not meaning this office, I mean in the facility. Most most times, like there are they they can make key cards like this, but to make like a replica one that's going to have the same access that this card had, probably not. You don't know if your company ha or the, this actual facility has. Because you, you guys know that these people came from somewhere else. So they would probably need to be made by that. You guys wouldn't have the access to do it. It's basically what I'm trying yeah. to say. Does it look like this person was working on something before they uh, were defaced? Before um, their face was degloved? Um, go ahead and make... Uh, so there, there is a computer on the desk. Uh, if you'd like to make a comtech roll, 
I'll allow you to make a calm tech roll, Haltroid. It's kind of hard to see because there's lots of blood splattered on the monitor. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, there's a lot of blood splattered on that monitor. That's it, yeah, yeah. It's a... <laughs> we, had, we don't have a vagina to clean it off. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks, guys. Plenty of jobs for me here. I'll be having overtime. <laughs> hey. McGor's gonna turn and look, seeing that Howard seems to be having a little trouble with the computer, he's gonna look over and go, um, hey, uh, Sig, get in here, your skill set is needed. And I'm going to uh -huh. use my talent called Pulled Rank. <laughs> oh, so it is roll. I roll command against the target's manipulation. If I succeed, they have to do what I'm, they're told. Oh, I was going <laughs> to do it anyway, oh, but. Oh, <laughs> He's pulling rank. Oh, here we go. So I go ahead. you the dirtiest look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh look, look at that. Roll. Look at what that. Uh, you roll right. manipulation, is that right? Or. Yeah, it just says it is a uh, contested role. Command um, versus manipulation. Command versus target's manipulation. Okay, so you roll <laughs> manipulation, which will be under empathy, under your stats. I clicked it. And it my stress work. level increases by one every time I do it. You clicked it, <laughs> but it didn't work? Yeah. So when you click on manipulation, it should pop up and say modifier. And then you just click OK. It's not doing it. Oh, OK, that's why it wasn't doing it. Yeah, it's uh, the pop the pop up system's a little. Oh, see. <laughs> so I don't I don't think I, I don't know what happens if nobody rolls anything successful. I think just just it stays the way it was, and you know you guys can just role play it out. I'll have to double uh -huh. check that rule uh, for next time. <laughs> yeah. That's the first time uh, anybody's just... pulled rank uh, within. A... <laughs> I'll I'll give like a really dirty look to you. And then wordlessly enter the room, I guess. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I'm like, you have Sigs a quick heads up. Like, okay, just prepare yourself. You, I might not like what you see in here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna squeeze into the room because this seems like a lot of people for this tiny room. <laughs> yeah. So. Um. Yeah, you get eyes of this mutilated body. So how much of information do I know about the creatures that I've studied in the lab? Are you using your analysis talent? Uh, am I allowed to use my analysis talent on this guy? On the dead body? Yeah. Is it considered a creature? <laughs> Uh, I will say, I will say you can, you can do an analysis on the body. I'll, okay. I'll allow it. Yeah. Okay. So just, just tell me like what, what it is your analysis talent allows you to do. Do you have to make a role for it or do you just learn some information if you study it for a period of time? Uh, you can roll observation to gain insight regarding strange and alien artifacts or creatures that you encounter and get a chance to study for at least one turn. For every role, you get to ask the GM one of the questions below. The GM must answer truthfully, but is mm -hmm. allowed to give vague or incomplete answers to avoid <laughs> spoiling the scenario. <laughs> it doesn't say what kind of successes I need for the role. I think I think you just need at least one. So go ahead and make an observation roll as you come into the room and start getting close to this body. Oh, look at that! Two successes. Oh, nice. Heck yeah. So you do succeed in your uh, analysis. And what I'm going to say is since you rolled two, now we also have things called stunts. Um, so if you click on observation, you can get, you can glean more information. You can use that second success to do one of these other things. Or you could do it to maybe ask me two of those questions from your from your analysis talent. Um, I'm sorry, I was just looking. I didn't know it would pop up. 
Oh, it's okay. Yeah, you can. <laughs> so I can ask you two questions or one of the questions that you just linked. Yeah, you see those other you see those other observation questions that popped up there. Yeah, you could ask one of those as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and these are no how... way, no way, shape, or form exhausted lists. Like if there's like another question that pops up that you would rather know or try or try to discover, we can discuss it out and see if it's appropriate for the situation. So. I want you guys to feel like you can be creative as well. You don't have to stick to the only questions that are on there. Um, I, I'm, I think I'm just going to go with the how old is this body? Uh, how old? How, how, how long has this person basically been dead? Okay. Um, from your analysis, you believe that this person has been dead for possibly three hours okay all right um do, do, do. um oh okay uh, are they fully dead okay carefully examining uh, yeah there's no pulse no breathing. Body is cold. Person lost a lot of blood and their entire face. Yeah. Mm -mm. They are dead. They're they're pretty dead. They yeah. are. Right. They are. It was worth deader. a shot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't feel like there's any sort of some kind of infection or anything like that. You don't feel like the body. Is, I mean, this person has been. It looks like scrapes and stuff just just eliminated their face and neck area and upper chest area. It's very very horrific. Okay, uh, so it looks like this person's been dead for like three hours. Um, well, that certainly rules out the, the gunshot earlier. That's wonderful, but I was asking you to look at the computer. Oh. Oh well, maybe, maybe you should be more specific with your high rank. Um, I'll I'll turn to the computer. Okay, you turn to the computer. Uh, uh it's a com comtech rule. That would be comtech, yes. One success. Um. You do open what seems to be various logs on the computer that seem to be in indicating just a rapid departure uh, protocols for them, Agent Reynolds and Dr. Kaminsky. They were needed. They were going to be report reporting to the shuttle. Uh, you can see that it is. It was done pretty much at the same time you have a feeling like sh this person passed okay so it was like mm -hmm. they pulled this up and then just died yes so can they... you get to the cameras sorry no oh, you go ahead oh. go ahead well i was gonna do that in the hallway but uh i don't oh. have the credentials oh you don't you can't use the stuff here to get to the cameras then i'm, I'm sure that there's probably codes that are uh like required when you try to connect to those. I could try. Okay. I'll try to connect to the cameras. Okay. Make uh, an additional contact roll for me. Okay. So basically what happens when you try to connect to cameras using the administrator's computer, um, it, you're allowed to kind of like log in to the the database, but it immediately asks you for a code. Right. Mm. So you can get in if you had the code to get you farther. But currently you don't have an administrator's access code. Oh, does the key card, is it like one of those cards you can plug into the computer to just get all their passwords? Um, it. You think it could if it wasn't damaged. Yeah. Oh, dang. <laughs> I have a sticky note with the password on the back. Oh, under the keyboard. <laughs> under the keyboard. Is there a sticky note? <laughs> Unfortunately, no. There is not a post-it stuck to the bottom of the keyboard. Very, yeah. very smart, <laughs> smart thinking. 
can't, can't get in. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> um, but it does look like he was trying to get a departure, a quick departure at the shuttles, uh, and then died as soon as he requested the <laughs> quick. Can we leave? <laughs> Where do you want to go? Not here. <laughs> okay. Do you want to go yeah. check on the other people down in the lock, or? I still feel like the best course would be head into the command center. Yeah, I agree. If if, any, if anywhere would be able to access things normally there, regardless of credentials. All right. And I even I even be able to spot a mop there. <laughs> I have a mop. Would that count as um, hand to a no? Because it says my skill it allows me to when I have um banter with people it yeah. reduces to stress sure sure you can use banter here nearby. yes yeah, I'll use yes banter. okay banter. Go. <laughs> yeah i'm gonna take two stress off <laughs> and that's from everyone that's nearby me so one step for that two steps nearby yeah so we're all in the same room so you're yeah, pretty much yeah. able to yeah so everyone does minus two Everyone has oh, minus everyone. two, yeah. With uh, with oh. with Hirsch's banter, everybody can reduce T stress. Uh, <laughs> wow! I was gonna <laughs> ask if I got one for coming into the room as well, um, but because I was going to give you one, but the way uh, Hirsch role played that out with like preparing you for what you were about to see okay. before you walked in the room, I rewarded that role play with the fact that you didn't have to take a point of stress. Okay. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Hirsch. <laughs> Excellent, okay. guys. So uh, one uh, one thing I do need all of you to do is I would like for all of you to make an observation roll for me. All of you in the room. Okay. Ooh, I got two. Nope. Hey. Uh. Oh, wow, look at this. All right. McQuarrie and Holroyd. McQuarrie and Holroyd, as you guys are getting things settled down. Uh, Sonny is pulling away from the computer. Um, you guys hear something. Skittering through the air duct above you. Oh, God. 